as an admin as a person who is curious you should be understanding what kind of packets are being exchanged and i'll be digging on it more okay so that is it and as far as the ntp is concerned it's the traffic is minimal means that packet size that it exchanges it's a very small size of, of packet so i'm like exchanging with you or sharing with you a very interesting uh, data here network use of ntp as per the estimate there are thousands and thousands of ntp servers there or say thousands of ntp servers and thousands and thousands and thousands of fact number one okay 86400 seconds in a, in a day so to convert it into ppm what i do let me put it like this it will be more easy right yeah. so that means how many parts per million so i i say 86400 divided by million means once tens hundred thousand ten thousand lakh million yeah six zeros right 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 if i'm not wrong yeah okay so for me this comes out to be 0 0.0864 seconds parts per minute right so if you calculate in ppm so it is this value so my drift file was showing what my drift file was showing a value of sorry I, I forgot the value let me go back and check it again 4.359 4.359 so my value of 4.359 right but this is in picoseconds this is in in ppm parts per million this is parts per million ppm how can i convert it into the uh, seconds so okay that means that means this value tells me that means my machine is fast by 4.359 ppm parts per million compared to my time source fair enough but please calculate convert it into seconds so now please convert it in seconds so it will be more human readable okay so what i do here i just point zero point zero eight six four multiply by my value is 4.359 4.359 so that comes out to be i don't know let me use my calculator uh oh if i open my calculator here yeah. so that means 0 0.0864 right multiply by what was the value what was the value 4.539 so i sorry multiply by 4 sorry 4.539 0 0.39 seconds 0 0.393 seconds whatever so that means my machine is roughly fast by 0 0.39 milliseconds as compared to my reference i can write here 0 0.39 milliseconds right so that means roughly my machine is fast by 0 sorry 0 0.39 millisecond as compared to my
time source i hope you understand these things so whenever you configure ntp so it is when you just give the server ip address and just start the service it is all that happens in the background it is all that happens in the background i hope you understand these concepts and just try to see on your machines how the things works and how the ntp works so it's a my a very small uh, effort of explaining you how ntp works deep inside so thank you very much for seeing this video god bless and, and i will be uh, back again with some couple of more very interesting videos thank you very much god bless i'm stopping the video now My entire family history is really all for naught. So I am literally, as far as I know, as white as it is possible to be. <laughs> Scientifically. Could I have a cup of water over there? Thank you, Gareth. Now, this is really important. I am not a very smart guy. I was a software developer at one point. I was awful at it. I was really terrible. Ask anyone who used my software. It was so buggy. It was ridiculous. So, being as this is the, I don't know, seventh time I've done a big dog and pony show about how terrible Linux is, I thought, how cool would it be to ask people who are actually smart about Linux instead of just me? So I did that. I asked a semi-random sampling of people. Raise your hand if you know who Cory Doctorow is. Yeah. Cory Doctorow is an author and a general free software and free culture advocate. You brought me two cups? You are righteous. Gareth! All right, all right. Now, Cory Doctorow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit, is, is kind of an idol of mine. I, I think he's kind of fantastic in every possible way. So, um, so I asked him. What do you think of Linux, Cory Doctorow? Oh, I hate Linux. That's a good point. So, <laughs> all right, so he was pretty blunt, I felt. He hates Linux, that's fine, but he's just one author. What if we could find another author and see what they think of Linux? Let's, get, let's make this scientific, right? Let's get a sample size. Cory Doctorow does not a sample size make. So I asked this guy. Does anyone know who Piers Anthony is? Of course you do, especially if you were a boy who was ever the age of 13. Because Piers Anthony has written 200 some odd books, fantasy novels, science fiction novels. The man is kind of a literary something or other. I don't know. I'm not very good with words. Giant. That was a really simple word that I could have used. It's fantastic. So I, I got a hold of Piers Anthony, who, as it turns out, has been using Linux as his primary operating system for 15 some odd years. Now, before I play this video, I should point out that Piers Anthony is not a sprightly young chicken. He has been around in this business for a very, very long time. In fact, I managed to track him down, literally, in the swamps of Florida, where he lives with his wife, and he is a very elderly gentleman. He was kind enough to record this video, which I think is absolutely adorable. <laughs> Sorry, Pierce. And he recorded it while sitting on the stairs in his home. This is what Piers Anthony, literary giant, thinks of Linux. Linux? It's a disaster. <laughs> so there you have it. So what we're at right now is a scientifically definitive result. We have a sample size of two, two distinguished and well-known authors. One who says that he hates Linux. The other who says that it's flat out a disaster. At this point, I decided it was safe to conclude that all authors hate Linux. 
So we need to move on from there. We needed to find someone maybe who works with Linux day to day, maybe someone who is involved in the monetary side of it and you know, making it fit for big companies, maybe someone who really knows his stuff. So, <laughs> so I reached out to Jim Whitehurst, the CEO of Red Hat. And I said, hey, Jim, just give me kind of an off-the-cuff thought. What, uh, what do you think of Linux, Jim? This is, uh, this is what he sent back. <sighs> Linux, Linux, Linux. After eight years of selling free, the only thing keeping me alive is this energy drink. This is a true story. This is a true story, by the way. Last night, I was trying to delete a couple of USB flash drives. Oh, damn. <laughs> Linux machine. I asked Mark Shuttleworth if he would come on. He respectfully declined. <laughs> okay, truth, truth be told, I cornered Mark Shuttleworth, the CEO of Canonical, about three times trying to get him on. He kind of just looked at me like, you know, I know what's going on. So, <laughs> two things. This is a little thing I do. Every time I do some sort of thing like this, where I get up in front of a room of people and try to act stupid, I plan it out fairly well. You know, I practice it once or twice, I make sure I know what all the slides are, but I always like to do one thing that scares me a little bit. One thing that I have not planned. So until about an hour ago, this slide read, what is Linux? Bonus points, compare it to a uh, so then I asked my wife this evening, what should I compare it to? She suggested a potato. Which means, in a moment, I will be comparing Linux to a potato and why that is terrible. But first, every time I've given this freaking thing, I, I have gotten this exact verbatim statement sent to me in droves. And I'm going to read it for you because it drives me frigging bonkers. I'd like to just like to interject for a moment. What you're referring to as Linux is in fact GNU forward slash Linux, or as I've recently taken to calling it, GNU plus Linux. Linux is not an operating system unto itself, but rather another free component of a fully functioning GNU system made useful by the GNU core libs, shell utilities, and vital system components comprising a full operating system as defined by POSIX. All of us have seen this. All of us have posted something on Reddit and had this be what someone comes back with. <laughs> It drives me to the point of murder. I love GNU stuff. I love free software, but the name G mayonnaise in a baked potato. What sort of messed up world do you live in? <laughs> Did you not have butter? Do you not have butter? Butter is amazing. Can you have a different butter? <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. So here's the problem with that. If you have a potato copying machine and it's cranking out these copies of potatoes, invariably something's going to go wrong. Have you ever seen the movie The Fly, where after the guy, go, Jeff Goldblum, goes through the machine a whole bunch of times, and like eventually a little fly gets into it and he comes out the other side not quite right? That's what can happen with a potato copier. And that's really what Linux is, right? It's not an operating system that you slap the ingredients you want on top of. It's a strange potato copying, freedom loving mechanism that enables you to eventually get mutant potatoes that have so much sour cream in between the molecules of the actual delicious potato that you can't get the goddamn sour cream out. <laughs> that really has nothing to do with the rest of this presentation, but I feel pretty happy with how that went. Now, <laughs> now, if I've got a long way to go here. <laughs> so Linux, we're all here because we agree it sucks a whole bunch, correct? Correct. So, what could we talk about? <laughs> People look at it and they think, by God, you're right. It is expanding to become what 